Hey guys, what's going on? It's Direct Capital and welcome back to Direct Capital channel. Today we're going to be focusing on when could Bitcoin peak in this cycle, which implies at the same time that the bull market isn't over. And we're going to be talking about this entire topic through the lens of the stock to flow model and focusing on the stock to flow upside deviations beyond the stock to flow line denoted in the stock to flow model. So we're going to be discussing the upside deviations and specifically focusing not only on the upside deviations that we've seen in the past, but we're going to be focusing on this sixth upside deviation, which actually hasn't occurred yet. So we'll be diving deeper into that. And of course, this is a video that's going to be based on a free edition of Direct Capital Newsletter, which I published yesterday. So if you'd like to read it for all the details, for everything to know about the stock to flow deviations and whatnot, feel free to check out the link in the description down below to the latest edition of Direct Capital Newsletter. This one in particular, I'm going to be going over the highlights, the main points in this video so if you'd like to read a bit more details about it the link is in the description down below but without further ado let's dive right into the update if you haven't subscribed to the channel feel free to do so for more videos like this in the future and one of the most important things to mention is that the stock to flow denotes scarcity it's a fantastic model for just outlining and predicting where bitcoin's price action can go and the stock to flow line here is in in the maroon color right over here brownish and it just showcases and nicely outlines where Bitcoin could potentially go and that sometimes you see that this stock to flow line is ascending and sometimes it gets a bit more curved and sometimes it actually gets entirely flat so it's really important to just understand that it's very difficult for Bitcoin to outpace a stock to flow line that's ascending and it's easier for Bitcoin's price action to actually outpace and deviate beyond a flat stock to flow line. So in this case, if the stock to flow line is flat, then of course it's going to be very easy for the bullish momentum to outpace that pretty much zero, that constant stock to flow line. So in any case, we're going to be focusing on this six upside deviation. And as you can see, this is a chart from a from late March, roughly speaking. So from part one in my stock to flow deviation series. And you can see how Bitcoin's price action has been, at least at that time, perfectly following, trend following and ascending stock to flow line. So we had tremendous bullish momentum in Bitcoin's price action in its upward ascent, but the stock to flow line was ascending as well. So no matter how quick that bullish momentum would be, it was very difficult to outpace this ascending stock to flow line. But of course, like I mentioned earlier on, when the stock to flow line flattens, that's when the chances of a Bitcoin upside deviation increase. And of course, upside Upside deviations in Bitcoin's price action beyond the stock to flow line have preceded tops in bull markets. And that's essentially what I'm going for this time around as well. So you can see right over here that if we just look at when the stock to flow line could potentially uh, flatten out, mid-May, early May was the time where Bitcoin would at the soonest be able to actually cross past this stock to flow line, which is now already flat. And this is a very useful chart right over here, just to showcase how the Bitcoin halvings in blue tend to proceed fantastic upside in Bitcoin's price action in the context of the stock to flow line and how we've seen deviations mark bull market tops every time we've seen an upside deviation. So really important to just notice that there are six upside deviations. Of course, the sixth one hasn't actually materialized. So we're gonna be focusing in the historical context on these five right over here. And of course, you saw a deviation to mark a bull market top in June, in April, in December, in December, and then June as well. Of course, in stock to flow deviations part two, I speak about how this June 2019 actual upside deviation isn't a valid one because it's all about deviations after the halving. Because of course, stock to flow actually denotes a scarcity in Bitcoin's price action. And right over here in June 2019, this scarcity wasn't actually implemented. We didn't see a shift in the Bitcoin protocol actually cutting the amount of Bitcoin created every 10 minutes and a half. We haven't actually seen that. So this scarcity wasn't apparent 
But of course, once the Bitcoin halving occurred, this scarcity was apparent and the price appreciation that follows from that scarcity, of course, is very clear to us right now. But in any case, this is not going to be a significant deviation for that reason. So we've had a deviation in quarter two before, in quarter two, right, April and June being in quarter two, we've seen a deviation in December and December. So that gives us out of four upside deviations that are actually significant, we've seen a bull market top occur twice in quarter two and twice in quarter four, excuse me, in quarter four at the end of December. So there's a 50-50 chance that there will be a bull market top based on this historical analysis in the context of the stock to flow model, that there will be a 50-50% chance of there being a bull market top in quarter two or in December quarter four. So the question is, when will that bull market occur? that bull market top? Will it be in quarter two or will it be in quarter four in December? And that's the question that I answer in the newsletter. And the thing to bear in mind is that, of course, we've seen a Bitcoin correction right now. So because of that Bitcoin correction, you can actually see an arcing in Bitcoin's price action relative to the stock to flow line. But the fact that we're arcing right over here doesn't mean it's a bull market top already because there has been no upside deviation like we've seen over here, here, here or here. There has been no upside deviation and the fact that we're arcing a little bit towards the downside is just normal price action relative to what is essentially the stock to flow line and just trend following it. We tend to see these sort of upside deviations around below the stock to flow line. This is only the first time in history that we've seen Bitcoin's price really follow the stock to flow line so perfectly. It's never been done before. Usually we just tend to be beyond it briefly or below it. But here we're trend following perfectly. And in fact, this is just normal volatility in the context of that stock to flow line. So this downward facing arcing in Bitcoin's price action just below this uh, stock to flow line isn't something to be worried about. I just focus first on the deviation. And of course, we were speaking about the earliest deviation being in May. But of course, you can see that we're not going to get that deviation in mid May. And of course, whenever we see a deviation beyond the stock to flow line, there's a very specific amount of time where we see this upside deviation take place. So it is a specific amount of time. And essentially, once we see this deviation from the stock to flow line, there's the countdown, right? The countdown starts for the Bitcoin bull market. The Bitcoin bull market suddenly has a countdown, it has a clock, and we have a very limited time that we can still enjoy the Bitcoin bull market. But we haven't seen that upside deviation yet. And the fact that we're downward arcing below this stock to flow line right now means that we're going to probably, on this retrace, once it finally bottoms, we'll probably see... Bitcoin reverse and enough time will pass that the stock to flow line will likely be horizontal and will be actually fully flattened out. So this means that if Bitcoin now bottoms on the correction, wherever that correction bottom will be and then reverses, it's probably going to reverse at a time where we see a flat stock to flow line and the upside deviation and the crossover would be much easier to exact. It would be very easy to cross over the stock to flow line, which would be horizontal at the time that the correction bottoms, and it will be time for that upside deviation to occur. And once that upside deviation occurs, that's when we have that countdown clock for the Bitcoin bull market. It's not that Bitcoin peaks once it crosses over the stock to flow line, it peaks when it upside deviates for a few weeks and then tops out whatever the price is beyond this stock to flow line. So we are the mid May deviation, of course, is cancelled. And this was a scenario that I actually explained in part three of the stock to flow deviations, which was available for readers of the Rex Capital newsletter. And I essentially spoke about the fact that Bitcoin can prolong its bull market by consolidating or correcting. So you can see right over here that Bitcoin's price action was perfectly following the stock to flow line for the past few months. And if it continued to do that, it would have been able to deviate beyond that stock to flow line. But 
the bullish momentum did slow. And it slowed down because, of course, there were two options, whether an extended consolidation period, which we could still have, of course, after this correction. But of course, we saw a correction. So Bitcoin's price has decoupled from the ascending stock to flow line temporarily and is temporarily below the stock to flow line as we speak. So the up to date chart is, of course, this arcing uh, price action below uh, temporarily below the stock to flow line. But what we need to bear in mind is that the bull market isn't over. The upside deviation, of course, has been prolonged. There will be a bit of a postponing there. But we have to bear in mind that this is at the moment just normal volatility in relation to the stock to flow line, which is ascending at this time. But shortly, in mid May, roughly speaking, we're going to see this flattening out in the stock to flow line. And once Bitcoin actually manages to finish its correction at around probably the same time, the correction that bottoms and we see a reversal from there, we're going to see an upside deviation probably beyond that flat stock to flow line. So really important to bear that in mind. So the bull market isn't over because the stock to flow models suggests it isn't over. We have to wait for that upside deviation and we haven't seen that upside deviation just yet. And having said that, that's about it for today's video update. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, feel free to subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And of course, like the video if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. This is a very important topic to talk about because many people have a lot of misconceptions about the bull market ending, the bear market beginning. And I think data science is what really brings a level headed approach to our analysis, just showcasing that this is nothing it's nothing to worry about. We're only seeing normal volatility in relation to the stock to flow line. And the stock to flow line is going to soon flatten out, which is going to increase the chances of Bitcoin being able to deviate beyond that line. And once it deviates and breaks out towards the upside and new all time highs, that's when we have to start thinking, OK, we've got that upside deviation. When are we going to see that bull market top? And that's where the calculations will start to uh, be important. That's when we're going to start to need to try and time that bull market top. But at the moment, we haven't seen that upside deviation. So there should be no panic. There is no urgency to try and time the top. Let's just wait for the data science models that have been time tested and historically accurate for so many years. Let's wait for this data science model to truly show us the way and truly give us some insight into when that bull market peak might occur. At the moment, it hasn't yet. And that's about it for this video. Thanks so much for watching today. If you'd like to learn more details about this entire analysis, feel free to check the link in the description down below for the latest edition of the Rex Capital newsletter. I'm Rex Capital and I'll speak to you in the next video. Speak to you soon.